what's going on, guys? Another episode here of the CTW Podcast. Jason, what's going on, buddy? Doing well, man. Doing well. I can tell you're just about to do a backflip. You're so excited there, That's as cool. always. Um, no, a lot of stuff going on in the state. And, of course, we got a really highly anticipated episode coming up uh, after sitting down with, with Pat Downey last week. But, um, yeah, a lot going on in the, in the Maryland wrestling community. I know uh, you were telling me Keesling and Rampage Wrestling Club was down at the, uh, the Southeast Nationals, had a big win down there. Yeah, I was, I was uh, saying we should probably try to get him on next week. I know his 7U team, I mean, I don't know, that's so tiny. But they, had, like, they ran through, they won that competition, they beat the Young Guns in the finals, which is, you know, a pretty, pretty well-known club. So um, we'll have to get him on to, to talk about that. Absolutely. Yeah, I actually reached out to Noggle about coming back to talk about uh, the trip out to Utah and not just the uh, the event itself, but all that went into it, driving out there and then all the... Uh, well, Noggle the- flew out there because he's like fancy like that. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's he's Hollywood, but the rest of them, I think, drove... Yeah, um, it was a long trip in a big in a big van, I think, and, um, you know, put together uh, by, you know, Wadi and some other people um, through the MSWA, so... I think Wadi mentioned that on, on his last podcast. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, it seems like they're doing pretty well out there. I saw like in, in the different divisions, they've had, had you know, multiple placers and, and a couple of champs there. Yeah, a couple uh-huh. of champs and, you know, I think one or two like triple, like uh, triple champs because it was freestyle, Greco and folk style, like one each day. So a couple right. people got like up, upwards of 20 matches during that time. That's awesome. And, and I'm just kind of curious to pick their brains about like what all was done. Is there any difference between these tournaments, just the structure, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like between these tournaments, what we're used to um, since lockdown and everything. I haven't been to a wrestling tournament yet. So No, I mean, I know there was masks like everywhere unless you were on the mat. So um, yeah, we'll have to get some more details and especially and talk about some of the results too. Sure. Um, Here at Scrape on the Horse. Now, that's something I want to do is actually talk more about now that events are starting to pop back up. Talk about results on these things. Give shout outs to kids that, that overachieved or in there doing work. And, you know, I know that um, uh, Stephen Gonzalez has a crew down there at Bison Duels right now, uh, some friends from Montgomery County. And um, can I get some more info on that as well? And just anybody. So if, if you have any events that you want to talk about, I can't promise we'll be able to fit in everything, but try to give quick shout outs during these intros uh, moving forward, especially now that the competitions are kicking back off again. Absolutely. Yeah, so before we get this show started, got to give a shout out to our sponsors. Uh, again, if you're interested in sponsoring the show, definitely be in contact with us. It's not really a sponsorship. It's more just a, a donation towards uh, Champions That Wrestle. Um, CTW, it's a um, you know, 501c3, so it's a nonprofit. All donations are, are tax deductible and everything. But first and foremost, the Hillbilly Hammers Wrestling Club, uh, bitter enemy of the show, Casey Camp at the helm doing great things out in uh, in Northern Garrett. And, you know, uh, my hatred for him completely stems off of not not being able to win those matches, either both as a coach or, or when he was an active wrestler. So, um, but the one thing I will say, no matter how much I hate him, is the passion he has for those kids that he works with. You really see it. And um, at the state tournament, even during the season, he's always trying to catch up on, on the guys that he works with whether it's his in-season wrestlers at Northern Garrett or, uh, you know, a lot of the Southern Garrett guys go over and get some work with them as well. So shout out to those guys at Hillbilly Hammers doing, doing awesome things. Yeah. And our next sponsor is uh, 410 Detailing, which is a family owned and operated mobile detailing uh, business based out of Annapolis. So local services, the DMV area, they take care of everything from simple washes and waxes to paint corrections, ceramic coatings, all things, interior cars, trucks, SUVs, RVs, motorcycles, boats, 410 Detailing is your go-to mobile detailing service that treats your vehicle just like it's their own. So check them out at 410detailing.com. That's 41 spelled out, then O detailing.com. Instagram, 410 underscore detailing. Or their Facebook page, uh, affordable prices, spectacular results. Um, anyone looking to have their car detailed, um, give them an email, 410 o detailing at gmail.com so that's f-o-u-r-o-n-e-o detailing at gmail.com or phone 240-215-7071 um and check them out yeah i'm probably going to hit them up here pretty soon as you know with uh, a couple of things going on in my my personal life um 
got to install a car seat here pretty soon in, in the old Hyundai. And the wife is uh, so beautifully put it, you know, that's way too disgusting to put a, a young human in. You need yeah, to get them to do the out. full, the full detail up inside and out. So I, ready for the baby. I'm definitely going to have to definitely gonna have to hit them up because it's just, uh, it's, you know, I, I can't put a new human back there. I, I have a hard enough time putting a high school kid in the backseat of that thing. So, well, and that, I mean, that brings up a good point. So the donation to CTW, right. Um, this donation, especially for these guys going to go directly to helping kids that, especially in this time, there's not a lot of places to train. Some of the places you're training, um, can be expensive. So, you know, this donation goes directly to these kids that, you know, might, might not be able to afford these drop-in fees or these camps or anything like that. It, there's it is just less opportunity right now because of the COVID. Um, so this is going to go directly to stuff like that. It's not just going to some big organization where, you know, it just gets lost in administration stuff. It just goes directly to that kind of thing. And the last point you talk about vehicles, putting uh, kids in the back, like, if you got a like a large van or like bus or anything that you want to donate, that's the perfect thing um, to donate to for taking kids to practices and tournaments. Um, I know uh, CGW is always looking for stuff like that as well. Yeah, for sure. I was this close actually on on sealing a deal on a van last week, and it, it fell through um as far as the donation goes so definitely that's like one of our big goals is trying to lock down a 15 passenger uh we rent one i mean every time that we go to an event we rent two of them last year for the new way summer nationals and and uh even during the the season on snow days the people at enterprise know me and they just say oh the 15 i got you and it's you know they just they know me by name and everything like that by now at the one over over in Reisterstown at Enterprise. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, it's not just monetary donations. If anybody has something they're trying to, to get rid of, definitely uh, give us a thought. But I don't think they the people chimed in and uh, I'm sorry, signed in to, to hear us talk today. Um, I think no, the they, they want it. Yep. PD3. So they want to hear from the Lizard King. So uh, Jason and I, this past week, we sat down in studio with, uh, with Pat Downey. Um, it's, uh, you know, I learned a lot. I think especially it's a, it, he's a popular subject this day and age with all that just went on with that flow event um, and, and his removal from there, a couple of comments he made. So we're going to talk about uh, a lot of his wrestling career, but then we're also going to touch on, on what his goals are moving forward. Now it's transition to the MMA and then of course, like we have to talk a, a lot about his, uh, his social media antics coming yeah. up. So the tweet, one, the, the tweet. <laughs> oh, what I what I will say is that he wasn't shy about um, about any, I mean I really felt like I was getting a genuine honest answer from the guy every every question we asked he he didn't back down from from anything and um, yeah you know, I know I think the I think the one he had to think about answering the most was the Dake versus Burroughs and uh, Snyder versus. Uh, Jaden Cox questions. <laughs> yeah, just uh, to peek behind the curtain, a little preview. I, I did put him on the spot and asked him for uh, Olympic trials prediction with all these weight classes being combined, how a couple of those matchups are going to go and who he thinks is going to win. So let's not hold it off too much. Just yeah, let's get, get it. right down to it. Sit back, relax, and thank you for supporting champions that wrestle. Here's Pat Downey. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, guys? Another episode of the CTW Podcast. Thanks again for tuning in. We always appreciate the support. Here with Jason, as always. Jason, what's up, buddy? What's up? This is uh, an in-studio one again. The first time that we came here, it was with Dan Ricker. Um, was our most popular and most viewed episode. Yeah. I think well, it had to do with the setting. It probably had to do with us being in studio. Yeah, I think so. So I think we could, I think we're going to top it this time. I think we are too. We've got a uh, very special guest, a uh, world team member here with us, just announced recently he's making the transition to MMA. Uh, also, most impressively, multi-time Maryland state champion, Pat Downey. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? How you guys doing, man? Thanks for having me. Great. On. Yeah, it's great to see you. The, uh, so what's going on? Nah, uh, just life, man. Everything's happening at once, you know. Recently, it was just a free agent. Got dropped by the NJRTC. Got put off the flip wrestling car with David Taylor. So, man, life was just like, for a few days, it was a little crazy. A lot was going on. So I've just been moving all my stuff back home, back to Maryland, getting back to my roots. Spending a lot of time with the family, you know what I mean? And that's it, really, while making these next moves. 
Sure. Yeah, yeah so you represent, do you rep Baltimore or you rep like Maryland? Like when someone says your hometown. Nah, yeah, you know, I'm from East Baltimore. I'm yeah. Probably, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. Grew up Burdick Park. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I rep. Yeah, no doubt. And the Baltimore Bruiser, you know what I mean? We got the Natty Boat, you know what I rep. <laughs> it's Baltimore Bruiser. So, yeah, I, it's funny. We were, I was talking with Muno about your nicknames. How many different nicknames do you have? <laughs> we just make them all. <laughs> whatever I'm feeling today, I, you know, I might change tomorrow. Whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm the Lizard King for now. Okay. All right. So, it's, uh, with that one. PV3 is just an abbreviation. It's yeah, a little thing. acronym. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. then you got Funky Bunky. That's the family nickname, Bunky. Right. Because I'm the third. I, all my family will be like, Bunk. So funny story about that is uh, over at the park one day as a little boy and uh, my dad screaming to get me to go to wrestling practice. I started wrestling in Rosedale, Tom DiCarlo, Golden Ring, and we were late for practice and he's like, bonk, bonk. And everybody in the park thinks he's calling me a punk. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, yeah, you and your dad got a weird relationship. No, it's uh, and probably your biggest fan also. Um, dad seems to be super supportive of you, um, even from the time that you were you were coming up in high school. Um, seems like your dad's always had your back. The, uh, do you oh, that, on the forum, he would be defending, uh, defending every last thing. Absolutely. Now, do you think that had to do, or what kind of role did that play in your progression when you were coming up and, and having success as a wrestler? Yeah, I mean, um, I was asked a similar question around Father's Day with track wrestling. They asked guys like me, Dake, and all these guys, like, what, what about our relationship with the father? You know what it means. And um, I was really blessed, man. It sounds kind of cliche, but not only have a dad who's a good manager, you know, who loved me, and, um, but like a best friend too. Like we did it all together. So uh, definitely, he plays a huge role in my life to this day, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I always, I always say that it's sort of that's kind of the underappreciated aspect of success. Like you know, the coach and wrestler, the coach and athlete have to be there, but that per, you know, parent support is something that's super. Important. I mean, you see it like every six, like up, especially in our sport. It's just like you always see them go in the stands, like thank their parents. Like it's, it's very rare that you can get to an elite level without you know parent support. Absolutely. Yeah. So the the, uh, um, the regional training center up in New Jersey. Kind of abrupt ending to it. So. Yeah, but it's still nothing below for them guys, man. Um, you know, I had had some, you know, uh, you know, incidences that led up. It wasn't really. I was probably the least of the severe things that I've ever done during my tenure there. You know, <laughs> two years. Come on, you think a little tweet was the only thing I got away with there? <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, I mean, you guys know me, so um, I said some things that was kind of provocative, and I get my delivery. Um, it was just on Twitter, though. Yeah, right? yeah. I tweeted, I tweeted like about um, the women's. I tweeted like why Flo wasn't putting the women on. Right. I said like they they're not putting women wrestling on the car because the women are getting offered less money than the men. They're offering them less money that the women that the matches they're willing to put on, like Helen versus Allie, yeah. Jakar versus Sarah. You know, uh, um, who they offered a few, uh, Faris Molinari, and uh, you know. What's her name, Tamira? Last year, world champ. So, I mean, there were some really good matches that were proposed, but the women just felt like they weren't given equal proposals, which was fair, but shit, nor was I. I, I got offered 7500 to wrestle David, who's getting paid 10, 20 grand, excuse me. And I had made more money with my sponsors and whatnot. Yeah. But then you got Dake and Chimizo making six figures. Dake and Chimizo, 50 grand. I'm just saying, it's all perspective. So I said that point, I and mean, that's I said, how UFC yeah. works too, right? The w and then I gave more analogies. I used yeah. the UFC. I used the WNBA. To, yeah. And then I also said it is fair because the Living the Dream Fund, you know, that these guys are private donors. We're getting donations. when we If we win a world title, guys like Jaden or Snyder, 250 grand, yeah. JB, these guys are getting private donations. Yeah. As the women are as well. The same yeah. equal money. So... I just think the entertainment industry is different. It's about the revenue you're bringing in. It's a business model. I said, Flo has the prerogative to put whomever they choose on their card. Absolutely. And and these were just the thing I'm quoting myself. Yeah. I really didn't say anything like, and I got just attacked and canceled during all these events, and I lost my job, and I lost my, a couple sponsors, man, and it cost me a lot. Well, let's talk about context then, because obviously, in, in whenever you text, or especially, I know from texting my wife every now and again, where, whoa, she did not take that the way I meant it. Um, that's, that's, get, get the couch ready. Um, but, I mean, it, you're, just to be clear, you're not stating that, that you're not a fan of women's wrestling. You're not a supporter of it. Dude. Like After talking, uh, it seems like nothing could be further from the truth. 
Context is everything. Now, my grandfather told me something when I was young. He said, it's, you can say whatever you want. It's how you say it. So with that being said, I'm not saying anything when I'm tweeting. I'm limited to 150, 160 characters. I'm trying to get a quick point out. You know, so I'm going to use, I'm going to say what I got to say as efficiently. And it's going to sound as cut and dry as possible. Because that's what, you know, that's what I use the app for. With that being said, maybe a, a message like this needed to be delivered with my words. A cat, you know, I got an iPhone 11. I can, you know, I can talk and give a message. And when people hear what I got to say, wrestle like a girl, Sally Roberts, you know, world bronze medalist, one of my biggest advocates, you know what I mean? Right. With that being said, to bash women's wrestling, for that to be my point, would stand against everything I believe in. Because one day after I'm done wrestling and fighting as a combative athlete, I plan on being a Division One college coach and a teacher. Like, I have a college degree to use it for that reason. Sure. So you think I don't understand that to, to grow wrestling, which is an LLC, I just opened up a company called Grow Wrestling. You don't think in order for that to happen, I don't see the how wrestling's getting killed, which is Title IX being used as an excuse with the equality of the NCAA. Mm -hmm. So really the biggest thing of growing wrestling is creating women's wrestling, right. more women wrestling, which I believe is one of the fastest growing sports in America. It's the fastest one, like, to, uh, to my knowledge. Yeah, to my and, knowledge. I mean, like, it's, and I it's see. not doing anybody good by not identifying, like, what, you know, the differences that are going on right now. So nobody you wants to I mean? speak yeah, about Yeah, you just difference. want to pretend that, oh, this yeah. is equal all of a sudden. It's, it's not like, equal. No, Talk no. about how it's not, why it ain't. Get more people to grow wrestling, and then we don't have the Title IX excuse. Now we have women in NCAA wrestling. Sure. No, and it's. I actually heard a rumor that even before this whole situation went down, was there talk about you wearing a wrestle like a girl singlet? I was going to wear it for free, not even no money, and I was going to donate some of the money that I was getting from my purse to make it even for the other women. Like it was completely taken out of mis context. My words got flipped, misconstrued into something I wasn't even saying. Okay, like what's well, if you how and how quickly. Did that go down? So. I woke up and it was like a it was bomb. Like, it was like the I next day. I didn't even believe it. I literally, cause I had all the women, like girls that I thought were my friends that I, you know, I've been on teams with attacking me. I got le letters from my governing bodies and you know, uh, safe sport. And I mean, it literally. I woke up and it was like I was in a whole new world. And so NJRTC within within that day said, "Sorry, you gotta yeah. go." Yeah. Who told you? Reese came over to my house. My coach mm -hmm. said, "Hey, we know we can do." You know, yeah. Coach uh, wrestling, head wrestling coach Prince, and guys like that. Their daughters wrestle, and I'm like, I, I know, I get. I'm in the room with my teacher. I want to yeah. wrestle. With sure. Him. I was uh, very confused, but it, I also, like I said, leading up to it, I had been had my fair warning. So, I think, uh, I think internally, looking back on it, like hindsight's obviously 2020, but I uh, definitely needed to do, I did what needed to be done. I expedited my process. Okay. Yeah. So the ultimate goal is you want, you want the entire sport to grow women's wrestling and men's wrestling that, together. Yeah, that, okay. yeah. Just so my point is clear. Yeah. Out of those tweets, well, you know, obviously my words have been misconstrued. And I actually did another interview with the guys uh, out in Michigan, like uh, Amin's brother and them guys huh? talking mm -hmm. about those specific things so that hasn't come out yet but uh yeah man i i want nothing else but to grow wrestling it's the greatest sport in the world save my life you know what i mean sure like freaking now, human chest now the backlash that that you've kind of received from it or, or apparent backlash at least on the you know on the internet if nothing else um you said that there's a couple of your teammates that that were speaking out against you at that point like did that catch you off guard yeah, like when you, I, by teammates, I mean fellow Team USA World Team members. Sure. When, you know, I mean, Men's Greco. I, I mean, I'm, oh, yeah, guys that I, you know, I'm hanging out at their house. Like, we got my friends. Right. Yeah, they're, they're misconceived. Yeah, I'm like offending them. I'm like, I'm like, did they, Damn. Did they like, talk to you personally or did yeah. they just send they're out all Oh, no, they're tweeting at me. They're coming at me on the Snapchat. They're calling me. I'm like, oh, my gosh. They're but hitting me from everywhere. A phone call, I can... You know, like that part that clears a lot of air real quickly. You know, right? Yeah. Then you guys get to I talk to Jaden Jay Cox for two hours on Facetime, like the next day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like real ones that know me, know, know me. Yeah. Now, did they did they approach it aggressively, or was it like, hey, you know, when they called you, was it like? It was similar, like, hey, man, not what you say, it's how you're saying it. Hey, your point's getting naked in the wrong way. It's just. Maybe, and it's probably, it's shit I already know. I know how it's getting taken, and I see that it's getting taken, delivered wrong, and I and I don't care. I'm like, you guys are offended by this? The truth? No, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna care about my words hurting your feelings. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's, but that's, I mean, 
now you have to deal with the consequences yeah. of the cancel the cancel. But when one door is closed, look at all the ones that have opened. I mean, it's like a I live and die by the same sword. I can't not be myself for this fear of losing it when I've been myself my whole life. And I say what I'm going to do. I do what I say. And look what happens. I mean, I've had a great following. I, I believe I'm growing the sports, though. Have you ever seen anybody talking about Greco wrestling or women's wrestling this much? Until. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, and that's. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you're being yourself. Yeah. At least it's going to be a genuine. I mean, it's you're my, give a genuine it's my media, right? Like, I'm on the social media. I'm the same person in real life that I am on there. Well, yeah, I think that's one thing I've learned and we've learned is people want authenticity you know what i mean so much people just put out these statements about oh i support this i support that and it just comes off a little fake so yeah um i think that's why you've gotten a big following is just be yourself and, and yeah i wanna, sort of i live serious. and die by the same sort you know what i mean sometimes it pays off and sometimes you know sometimes you lose a bunch of followers sometimes you gain fifty thousand in a year sometimes you lose you know what i mean a few hundred overnight it's Oh my god, live my life based on the social media facade of who's following me, who likes what I'm saying, who doesn't. I've never done it for them. You know yeah. what I mean? Now do you do you sometimes forget for a second the the kind of reach that you do have? And sometimes Definitely. it's you know, like it's well, it can't be that long ago that you, you exactly. have a household name. You know? Exactly. That's that's what's funny, is because I've always been myself and when you're being yourself and you're peasing the what is it, a thousand on Instagram or five thousand on Facebook, whatever I've had before I blew up, made, you know, went on an undefeated 2019 run. Sure. Being the same person I've always been. Yeah, now, I, now I'm perceived as like a role model. I didn't grow up with any role models. You know what I mean? My yeah. first wrestling coach died of a heart attack from overdose in a trailer park. Jeez. You know what I mean? Though, yeah. Like, this is real life. I'm not in their fake world. I'm in the real world. Mm. And now I'm getting crucified for it. So hopefully the fighting world just takes me as I am, you know what I mean? Yeah, now do you think the next time it's time to do a tweet, do you think, you're, are you gonna remember, like think back, yeah. like, oh man. <laughs> I'll definitely, I'll definitely learn from this. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or you just, and then you're just gonna be like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, I'll probably still say fuck it and send this shit. I don't, I send it, that's what I do when I wrestle, like I get a lot, ah, uh, let's just right. send it. Yeah, I'm the same way in real, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, just, it's I so think weird. wrestling and fighting and stuff like that is an expression of art too, so I think there's a lot of, uh, personality but in their style like you can see a personality from the style they wrestle with right yeah and I, and I think too you talk about expression um one of the parts is i do see people and one of them i believe was actually a female um journalist for internet wrote about how the freedom of expression is important to remember here um and that you know like you should you read her article that's sammy brooks's mother who wrote that oh okay i don't have internet uh an uh, internet uh subscription i didn't get to actually read it but i saw that title I'll get you my well, but I gave her my I gave her I gave time. her the speech, so I know what was said in there. It's not like I'm like some narcissist has got to go read myself. But I would like to see what she wrote. No, well, it's, was it, it good? I'll let you read it after this. Thank you. <laughs> I'm fishing. I'm like, can, can I do yeah. no. But, I mean, one of the things I noticed from it was was at the end. A lot of times you'll see this where it seemed like you were open as far as discussing the incident, but when when there was a chance for. Uh, for the RTC to comment, they sort of just left it very cut and dry. Um, and I don't know if that's for legal reasons or... As or everyone. Why flow, flow, yeah, at contracts and... All yeah, that. I mean, so I the, when the flow came after NJ RTC, right? Correct. So how quickly was that? That was like within a day or two? Same thing. Yeah. And yeah. they just were like, hey, same thing, like we can't put you on the card now. I basically said I had to issue an apology. They told my management at the time, Paradigm Sports Management, that I had an apology. And so my management wrote me up an apology, and I refused to send it. And then they're like, if you don't publish this, you're going to lose the match against David Taylor. Right. So I didn't even care about I mean, the money's the last thing on my mind when I'm worried about these matchups. Like, I'm trying to get better, gauge myself before the Olympic trials. This is my biggest competition. My last, av my, you know what I mean? Not last. There's a ton of other good guys. You know, I got Miles and... No, but guys. he's the he's well, the guy. Obviously, he's the defending world champ before I made the team. So obviously, that's who I want to be. You know, that's who I'm trying to wrestle. So I I post this apology against everything myself, my father, and my grand that we stand. You know, I said what I said. So why would I go against it and recant a statement, and retorting words that I believe? Right. What did I mean? Do you, I did I mean, it to do save you know, the match. Do you, 
Yeah, I and mean, you still canceled. What exactly did the apology say? Like, I didn't mean it, or like it was like, I love. I can't even remember. They wrote it for me. If I read it, if I wrote it, it would. I could yeah. tell you, but yeah. um, it was it was just things that I didn't necessarily agree with, and I eventually ended up firing them and parting ways. You know, you're fired. I quit. You're fired. Whatever. Yeah. You're not gonna listen. I showed them. You know right. what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna. Well, then Flo ended up still dropping the match too. Yeah. Apparently they were getting so much heat from whomever. I don't know. It was just from them, internet people, I guess. And they right. still didn't get any no. women's matches or Greco matches on the card. Like used me to crucify me. I ended up being like this freaking scapegoat when all I'm trying to do out is point out, like flow. I'm calling flow out. I'm yeah. saying why this is why they not having them. Why won't y'all have women on the card? Men's Greco like these. And I'm saying I would personally pay to watch them. Sure. Oh, I yeah. said that. <laughs> well, and it sounds like that they – did they try to, but they were just kind of offering them low and the people were like, but no, they, I'm but not But they weren't. They were getting offered the same amount of money as me, the women. The women were. And I wasn't complaining. They were. Yeah. They were because they're, they they're like, well, Pat, we, we're world champs. We have this, that, the third. I'm like, well, right. shit. I'm still bringing in yeah. quadruple the viewers. Right. I mean, and that's – And I'm wrestling yeah. for flow for free because it's a uh, – when I first started, I wrestled for free. Then I wrestled to get a few hundred, 3,500. Then I get like this nice race, 7,500. Okay, we're jumping on money. But it, I use them as an opportunity to perform my art on their platform to the biggest wrestling entity in America. Yeah. Probably the world. Like, who's getting more coverage in the world? This is like a relatively new thing. I mean, how long, how, I mean, I mean, even yeah. just 10 years ago, like, no one's getting paid to, like, wrestle. That's what like, I'm saying. A you saw me do it with Nikki Ride, Gordon Ryan. Uh, they, the guy right. from Float said I was their trailblazer for money matches. I was like, who's, who's number one main event and Carver Hawk guy? I mean, they, and they're telling me these are the facts I'm getting from the guys at Flow. Yeah. You know, yeah. Joe Canyon, Christian Pauls, Mike Mao. These guys are telling me this information. I think what kicked it all off was that awesome opportunity at the Franklin Fall Showcase. That <laughs> was the, that was the first start. That was the start of it. Yeah. Me and Asper. Yeah. Me so and we, Asper. So we got to give credit to Josh, man. He's, <laughs> he's another one, Maryland guy, always down to wrestle. And we can keep you locked in for the same rate that you were the last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Everything fixed rate, man. I'm a Maryland guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, that's besides the point, man. You know, it's all about growing wrestling. And that's what I'm trying to tell these girls. I'm saying, ladies, you can't say that you're not getting to wrestle on the card when Flo's offering you the opportunity to wrestle these matches on the card and then you got this excuse well we're returning world champs well this is a this is a matchup for the Olympic trials oh and me and David ain't we're, we're David and I aren't one of six athletes two of six excuse me we're in that six me and I mean I could list them all sure. but you get what I'm saying this isn't a premier matchup no it's a it's a world champion against the defending world team <laughs> and i'm saying why do you think if it's not a premier matchup why is this business flow wrestling willing yeah. to pay us so much money to wrestle yeah yeah and you, then they and then they're the same girls saying that they can't wrestle because they're turning the matches down well and and so you wrestled um a match that wasn't through flow it was like a month before fight tv that's the yeah. next big thing we got a match a month coming up right so i mean it seems to me like sick. there needs to be some sort of competition in there oh, we, because, already got it, we already got it yeah so out. then if so the, we're you know then you have okay like flow's not gonna pay me this are you guys gonna pay me this we got the next well, card going yeah, we'll in the jungle. Them, or if not fight, if two, fight tv's paying me more than flow yeah, was, and we're wrestling in the jungle yeah <laughs> it's be wait in the jungle <laughs> yeah what jungle you saw how the last event was rumble on a rooftop yeah it was like goofy rules now i'm gonna have a i can't give it out yet but i got a real <laughs> nice opponent yeah. In line. yeah can you tell the location or just it's a the jungle. jungle rumble in the jungle yeah exactly just yeah, yeah, there's yeah. gonna be trees just, just like it was just a rooftop you know, right. just a beach just just that's will there be that's, snakes that's, <laughs> <laughs> is it is it <laughs> like free is it freestyle yeah, or yeah you know the, the the schematic is to have three pro matches a card so you saw it last time we had like me and uh, Rao and Nolf and uh, Oliver. Great mm -hmm. matches, you know, uh, Lugo and Pletcher. So you get three pro matches a card, right? And then you had all the other cards. Yeah. Amateurs, kids that want to build their brand, good kids, good recruits, get, you know, got grow wrestling, man. Yeah. It does seem like, that, now back when, this is probably a little bit before your time, but when they started doing like the professional wrestling leagues, like right around yeah. when, it was probably like in the late 90s or something like that. Yeah. I do think with like all the, the ability to live stream and, you know, like the pay-per-view on, on the internet, I think that's, this might be a time that it really takes off. Especially with COVID. 
no, the lack yeah. of sports. Oh, right. Yeah. That's the, that's the biggest thing in my opinion right now. But also, you're right. Those, there were a lot of failed business schemes. Mm-hmm. And if you if you're in business, how can you expect guys like whether it's the PFL profile or a, you know what I mean or the um what they just do, AWL American Wrestling League right you can't cut guys these real checks if they're, if they're not making money sure yeah I, I mean, mean it's just simple business like if you have a, a whole full women's card and Gret men's Greco card and nobody knows who's on it and cares how are these guys gonna pay them if nobody's watching and bringing in revenue right you yeah. get money off of spectators so with that being said. I want to have cool Greco matches on and cool women's wrestling matches on these fight TV cards. They're leaving it up to me to make like the, uh, you know, matchmaker plus I'm going to be wrestling, obviously. But uh, we're looking to pump out a match a month. Okay. Match a, mo- a, a card a month. You know what I mean? Is a that, and is that going to be like pay-per-view each event you pay yeah, for? It's fight TV. Because Flow was like... Uh, subscribe. You this subscribe. You got to buy the whole thing fight, fight to TV see it. Completely yeah. Pay-per-view now, I think the pay per view models a little bit better because then you can, yeah. you know. No, I, I, I mean, I think it's now. Will they all? You said this one's the jungle. Way better streaming too. Is it like those streaming be, like, issues. Unique like, settings each time. <laughs> <laughs> like will be like, exactly. So you know, rumble, last time I was on the rooftops, so you got to rumble in the jungle. Next time it'll be like the you know. And then all the some beach, the yeah, we're going, going to freaking <laughs> like an aircraft carrier. <laughs> That's what he said. A battleship type yeah, thing. Yeah, that would be tight. Golf course, like really cool <laughs> shit. Like, oh, on a green. green. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Change the game because whatever's been done in the past obviously ain't working. Yeah, people still you still get weird comments about wrestling, touching sweaty dudes, or I mean, you got Iran, Russia, Azerbaijan, India, China. There, they see cauliflower. They see good world class wrestling. They're like fighter. They're like, oh, fighter, great skill, fighter, respect. Like, yeah, national sport, you know? Right. The average American citizen doesn't realize that uh, that any top eight world class wrestler right now in the senior circuit could go in and control another human and beat them up without laying a hand on them. Right. Just hold you down and make you quit. Yeah. It's a lot of control and power. And the, the I just don't think the sport is being delivered to society properly mm-hmm. in order to allow it to grow the way I see it. Right. And you talk about grow wrestling. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, one, are you happy with the way that the sport is growing? So is it heading in the right direction? And two, what do you think that we need to do as a wrestling community in order to grow the sport to uh, a level that you'd be happy with? Um, yeah, man, good question. But, um, yeah, because if you, it's a fine line because it, because you got if you say no, you're not happy. Then you're just disregarding all the growth that has happened. No, the no, influx no, no it can always be yeah. better. No, yeah, but, that's what I'm saying. And then to be like, yes, yeah, ba- yeah, it is yeah. good. It's to almost no, but it does complacent. seem like it's heading in the right direction. I agree. Right, it's and good. The, right, yeah, but it's not. It's going to accumulate like a snowball. But good is the like enemy of it. great. You right. know, like yeah. it went, went, now you're good. It's like, oh yeah, wrestling's growing. We're good. No, wrestling. We gotta get. There should be. More D1 programs, there should be more, there should be all the women should be wrestling in college, view it as a, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just like in Japan, why do you sure. think our women lose to Japanese women? Because they got five times the amount of women wrestling. You know sure. what I mean? It's yeah, just law it's numbers, law yeah. numbers. Um, and then the way, we, we, we have to have more, there should be like a day. You know how you got the Sunday night football? Where, where's your wrestling day? There should be a day for the average fan to look on TV and know that there's wrestling out there. Somewhere, right. you know, what I mean, there, you can watch wrestling, and hopefully, like, we get that going with Fight TV or whomever it is. But that's a that's a business model. But and then for everybody else too, there should be more um more coverage. Like you got Flow, it's just just one company. You got other guys that are trying to pick it up and not compete with them, but maybe emulate their business model and reproduce what they're doing. But maybe for a not so much of a business mindset for a grow wrestling mindset which uh-huh. is why i open up grow wrestling i'm hoping to do put my you know vi- you know what i mean my dream into reality that's sure. my plan like is this a long-term goal for you long-term. is it yeah, this lifetime is, goal. like yeah, past life. your yeah, yeah, past yeah, your competitive this my, phase this is like my me giving back to wrestling equal for the genuine of what it's given to me sure you know what i mean with no other ulterior desire and motive other than to truly grow wrestling Mm -hmm. change society's perception because i think that's the problem if more people understood and could appreciate what they were watching they'd be tuning in every week oh yeah i think i mean look there's a reason why we all love it all the people that are watching this right now and and the three of us sitting at this table it's because it's uh it's an amazing sport so you know everybody could just be exposed to it then 
then eventually they could have the, the you know there'd be the possibility that they fall in love with it if they if they understood it. Uh, what about worldwide? So you've been all over one of your junior world championships. That was in Thailand, right? Yeah, Pattaya. That was sweet, man. Yeah, going to like Bangkok, took a bus ride down to this resort. Oh, don't get Maga started on Thailand. No, but yeah, Pattaya. <laughs> yeah, Pattaya in general. That's one that I. Uh, I, yeah, I love my time there. For yeah, whatever. you've been there? Wow. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I, I uh, went over to kickbox for, I spent four months over there one year and, and a month another time and was training, but story for another time, but we, we did a couple of weekend getaways to uh, to Pat, uh, Patea, so it's, uh, Patea. it's a, yeah. a great time. But what was, what were the, t- you know, because obviously Muay Thai, their national, or Thailand, their national sport is Muay Thai kickboxing. How did the locals take to, to wrestling? Was Love it pretty it, popular? Yeah, well, it was like a whole resort for, of athletes there. So, I mean, they literally had the whole, you know, Pattaya town shut, like, focused on this. I mean, we had boxers, we had wrestlers, we had kind of judo, we had you know volleyball, soccer. I mean, it was track. They had really cool things happening. Okay, and, uh, man, they it was nothing but love, nothing yeah. but love. Now, did they did the locals though? Did they make a point to come and watch wrestling? Uh, it was packed. Yeah, was it? Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, you had little autographs, and you know whether it's in. Krasnyarsk or Poland or you know what I mean what Peru where yeah wherever you are it's like they freaking love you sure <laughs> where are the best fans where do you where Russia <laughs> yeah easily you know you are, you are, you, it could be freaking negative thirty degrees and there's still Russian mugs hanging from rafters just to watch <laughs> well, talk about the energy there like going and actually getting to compete nuts, and the nuts. energy and the, in, at the World Championships man I wrestled in the World Championships we're leaving in Kazakhstan. Mm-hmm. We literally had to barricade Jaden and JB and Snyder and Bake, you know what I mean? All like the the top USA rock stars. We had sure. to like barricade them just to like, because they're like super nuts. It reminded me of like a Justin Bieber here at a little girl's concert. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It was hilarious. Wow, that's something. Now that, that had to be a cool experience, making the world team, being able to compete for Team USA. Um, one of the things in this one I, I actually wasn't too happy about, me being a Maryland, you know, loyalist but um like on some of the national we'll call them like message boards or or facebook groups or whatever the case may be after the world team trials took place there was talk about at your weight class they should allow somebody else to drop down now and challenge Uh, i think like bo nickel was one that lost to Jaden cox and people were saying oh you should let nickel go down now and and challenge downey and it was like do, do you feel like a lack of of loyalty sometimes from the uh from the wrestling fan base or do you feel like they're they're fairly supportive of you well see yeah that's another thing i mean that was like that's probably um a random person's opinion you know what i mean that was never like uh Consider that was never like a thought by uh, USA Wrestling. No, you know, it was so. never in the bylaw. It was never even an uh, option. I mean, it was Nickel or anybody else's. You know, at seventy nine, anybody else who's there now that wasn't there before, it was their prerogative to leave. Sure. But that being said, I never left because I didn't. I wanted to beat the best to be the best. So I, I, I didn't tell them guys to leave, and and I can't talk. To, you know, right with these fans and stuff with with their. If they want to like Nickel more than me, let them. I mean, that's not... I can't uh, care. Right. You know what I mean? Because whether they love me or they hate me, they're going to be watching. Right. And just <laughs> to clarify, I don't think I saw a specific wrestler make that claim at all. It was more fans. I, and on the fact, I, I saw wrestlers like James and Jaden say the opposite because of these guys. Like, once we're in, making World Team, we're on Team USA. Right. After this team is established... If you're a fan of like Nebraska wrestling, or you're a fan of Penn State, and that's your guy, like Nick or whomever, David's your guy. If he goes down, do you not trust in America's system? Do you not trust in the system that has just won us a world title two years ago? Yeah. Do you, do you not? I mean, it's us and Russia for a reason. Yeah. Do you not try like Zeke Jones back in 2012 implementing the RTCs changed the whole game. So do you not trust in like the infrastructure and your whole and the whole athletes? Because that's the point, the depth. Is the point right? That's how we all make each other better. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I mean, it's obviously we're talking, you know, much, much, much smaller scale. But if I go through the regional tournament here in Maryland, and then <laughs> after the regions, I see that somebody has 
has dropped down to, uh, you know, my weight class. I can't say, oh, I know I qualified for states at this weight, but I want to go a different one now. Like, it just doesn't really work. Like, we have set guidelines for the qualification. People were just, they were expecting David Taylor to be there. He's obviously a great wrestler. And when he wasn't, they're like, uh, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, it's not like, I mean, you, like you said, you were one of the few people that didn't run, I guess. And if who like if they were at that weight and they should have been at David Taylor's weight, then why didn't why didn't they enter the tournament that, mm-hmm. at that weight? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So getting to be on that that team, you know, I'm sure you developed relationship before you know going and traveling with them. But who were some of the guys you really developed a tight relationship with on on Team USA? Yeah, man. Um, it was awesome. Just that. Just the whole summer, best summer of my life. Just traveling. I mean. Even before, like going to Cuba and Russia, and but uh, really, I would see him, Tyler Graff, man. Okay. Getting to learn him, he's a quiet guy. You won't see him on the media at all, but like, man, he is a really just genuine, interesting, nice guy, and just great lifestyle. I mean, man, uh, just a good somebody like I would like a uh, you know admire, good role model, mm-hmm. man, good good guy. Uh, it was really cool, genuine times, just uh being a roommate and then we're in Germany towards the wind down and we had our own rooms and you know wrestling an individual sport everybody's on their own plans you know this guy's doing his thing he's doing his thing I got to pick a lot of other guys' minds though but I would always see me spending time grabbing coffee with Tyler and stuff so it was cool making a team together because we were on the NJRTC team together okay but he had just moved from Virginia Tech and um he let her wait, guys. We never trained together, never spent a lot of time together. This like forced us to be together, mm-hmm. and it was just cool getting to uh, know him. He's a great dude, man. Uh, so you said everybody's on their own training schedule, even like on the team while you're over there, like yeah. preparing. We're all we all of our coaches and stuff. We all have our own training partners. Okay. We're all you know. I mean, a guy like me and Jaden or me and Snyder, we might roll together on a certain day if we if we choose to. You know what I mean? I yeah. wrestle with Dake probably the most out of everybody on the team. But he wasn't over there, right? Because, I mean, well, he was over there, but at acclimation camp, he wasn't, like, he does his own thing a lot. Okay. Like, he's another guy that just does his own, you know what I mean? All these guys, they're on their own. Again, that's the beauty of it. You used to be different, right? You would think that's weird to everybody be on their own plan. But think about the process to make the team. Sure. We're at RTCs. I mean, this guy's doing his belief, you know what I mean? We're all listening to our bodies. We're all with our own specific coaches. You know, Reese might emphasize hand fighting on me, while me, meanwhile Jaden and KJ might be emphasizing swing singles and different, you know what I mean? And David Taylor might be emphasizing, and Dake's emphasizing tanning. And you know what I mean? Like, right. everybody's got their own focal points is what I'm saying. So it wouldn't make much sense to bring us all in and then put us on some dictatorship yeah. and just chain, break, you know what I mean? Like, don't. Don't fix what isn't broke. Right. So now you get the, you get more of coaching on an individual basis mm-hmm. rather than like the entire team training. Mm-hmm. And I still utilize all the Team USA resources. Don't get me wrong. USA Wrestling, they do it right, man. We got masseuse there. We got personal. We got cooks there. We got chefs. We got our great coaches there. We got, um, you know what I mean, just strength and conditioning coaches. We got the trainers there. We're getting our... Uh, what is it? The uh, physi- physiology lined up with like our acclimation timing to how when we go over there eight days before one hour for every time zone change to right. acclimate to the time when we're competing. I mean, you see guys doing other things. Guys will be staying up all night. Like me, I can't wait to get there and sleep. <laughs> like, no, you got to stay up. I'm like, oh, hell I do. I'll train tonight. Like I'm on my, you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. So I'm a little different than everybody else when I say we're on our own thing. Right. Now, so I don't know if you're going to feel comfortable answering this and, and feel free to pass, but Coming up on the Olympics, what's your prediction? We go, you go, Cox or Snyder for making the team. Jesus, that passes. You can. It's, that's fine. I gotta go because I train with them both, and Jaden's just harder for me to wrestle, and he was harder for me to wrestle when he was closer in my weight. So when we're talking about guys coming down. I think Bo decided that he's going to go whatever weight Jaden doesn't go. <laughs> <laughs> I got Jaden. Yeah? Yeah. Jaden over Snyder to make it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything with uh, Dakin Burroughs? I 
He's really thinking about it. Yeah, he's gonna. At least we're getting honest. Answer. I got Burroughs. Okay. He just had just. Well, he said it's not going to be his last one either. He's doing one more cycle after this. I think he just he just announced that guy's a machine. He's. Uh, have you learned a lot? I, I think you and I talked right before you went off to Nebraska, where you're. That's who there. recruited me there, JV. And, and that I believe I don't know if you're that's telling a violation, me violation, but he's going there now. <laughs> it, isn't that's what that's why you said that you wanted to go there was because of the him. Only reason I was at the Olympic Training Center before JB would come in for national team camp. We wrestle one day, and he's like, who the hell is this kid? I'm like, pulling him up my overhook. He blasted. I was like, but I was wrestling with him, man. I was on him. And mm-hmm. he came back, wrestled with me again. Next thing you know, Manning thought, yeah, he recruited me. That's why I went there. First JB, of course, yeah. Yeah, now, I, I don't, you know, it seems like, and now that I'm finding out that the training is a lot of individ, on an individual basis, it may be different. But what kind of, I, I got to assume he's the leader of Team USA or, or sort of the emotional. He seems like he has great leadership skills and just a, a genuine person. Talk about him as a, as a teammate and, uh, and a friend. Yeah, man. Um, I, I've known JB Jordan forever, man. And uh, since ever since he, he, he's been the same guy since I met him, at, you know, when I was like 19 out there. Super humble, charismatic, nice, you know what I mean? Um, but a genuine guy. Like, he's, it's not fake. It's not like he's turning on playing this facade, like, you know, like some of these other guys are. Like, he, he's, he's a real man. He's a real guy, dude. And, uh, by that, I mean, he's the same Jordan that I've always known. And, and uh, you, you gotta respect a man like that. And he leads by example. He's there 10, 20 minutes early stretching, getting ready. He's he's doing the right things with his body. He's sleeping. He, you know, he's t- he's playing daddy. He's, he's a great husband. So I mean, he he's he's doing life the way it's supposed to be done. And you see a guy like that that's been blessed with God given talent and uh, has naturally hard work and right. super tough. I mean, Jordan just doesn't turn it on in the match decides to go win the Olympics. He I see him when I see him do it all the time in practice. He makes winning a habit. So, yeah. so, so I'm talking about role models and guys that you look up to. He's been the best of my time. So from the GOAT, greatest of all time, that's mm-hmm. all I can, you know, I watch the TF. He might be my favorite. Right. But for me, Jordan is my, you know, now now Jaden might be on his ass now because that boy is the best. He is the hardest for me to wrestle. Yeah. Jaden is, yeah. That's, that's why I give him the nod. And, and JB. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm biased in my picks with picking JB and Jaden, you know. But I'm. I train with these guys. I feel like I know them pretty well. Like, I don't know. Like, I, it'd be hard. It's... Yeah. No, it's, and both of them just see, especially Burroughs from like the videos that I see. Um, again, I don't have any firsthand knowledge, but it's that scary thing of a phenomenal athlete with that's willing to work harder than everybody and just see how scary that can become. And he, year after year, it just, it, you know. No, no, he's, he's like wine. He just keeps getting better. Yeah, no signs <laughs> of stopping. So, what, what ended up happening with Nebraska? Was it just, uh, you know, I, that's something I'm, I'm completely ignorant uh, towards. But. Yeah, no. Um, I just kept. I just couldn't stop smoking weed, and I failed the drug test there. And oh, okay. So Manny said you should go fight, and I almost went to start fighting. And I was like, Nah, let me finish this college thing, so I'm not a quitter. You know, so right. I went to uh, Iowa Central, and you know, King Velasquez went there. John Jones went there. <laughs> Kobe Covington right? went yeah. there. I mean, a lot of the two Legers off the hook. So I mean, once I had that opportunity present itself, I seized it. You know, I never lost there. JUCO national champ, rest is history. Yeah. All state, all American. Sure. Still in and out of trouble with the the freaking drug test with the weed. Uh huh. Again, at Iowa State, had the problem where I missed my one season, and then uh, there was a was there an Iowa thing in there too? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Same what thing. what was? Right. Yeah, well, no, I was, I was, I got a, I got an associate's degree. So listen to this, man. I had this how talking about shooting yourself in the foot. I got twenty four credits because I thought that because I was a D one qualifier already, uh-huh. that I didn't need an associate's. So I sat out that year, right shirt in Nebraska because I was transferring from D one to JUCO. So I had to sit out that year. Okay, qualified for the Olympic trials that year though. Okay, out of Iowa Central, and if Iowa Central. Was a four year. I'd have never left. That was the only spot I fit in. Love it, man. Moffitt and they didn't, they didn't make you drug test. No, well they did. <laughs> they did. They did it. I, I just got a heads up so I could pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. You know, like He's a good athlete. He's a good kid. 
it's, so, uh, you know, I mean, I'll take some credit for that. I uh, Moffitt knows the recruit. Okay. The Maryland scene. He told me he's like, I got a Baltimore boy. Yeah. Got a Baltimore boy. Yeah. So he's looking for the gems out here. You said we have gems we have people that are oh, there's talent absolutely oh, there's talent i won't i won't deny the talent but uh it's the same like look at the look at the uh, depth like if you go to pa states you might have one anomaly here or there you go to jersey states you know a couple of guys that are just off the hook way better than everybody but mm -hmm. in general there's some parody there it's like oh okay these are awesome tough knot you know what i mean and then you might need the maryland ringer the state chant the the, the blue chip guy just to beat one or you know what I mean? yeah. hang with these guys maybe but you take these guys in the states, and like me, I was kind of a buzzsaw in Maryland. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, Don't I, argue that. Yeah. yeah. But until my senior year, I was never a national champ or anything. I never won Fargo or NHSCA senior night. I would always take fifth. I was always there. I was right. competing. Yeah. I was like, damn, who's this guy? Ah, PA state champ. Ah, who's this guy? Ah, no shit, Jersey state champ. You know what I mean? Yeah. So against these guys, I just think it's a depth thing. We need to get – we need to – uh we need to fill out these brackets, man. We need more. We need. We need just more depth. Like we need to grow wrestling. We need to grow wrestling in this state specifically. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, PA compared to, I mean, the number of wrestlers just in general. Well, but that's you're the whole thing. That's yeah. the whole. That's Geographically, what though, like you know, PA and Jersey are not that far from Maryland. No, no. one yeah, comes on a border for very, God's sakes. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, so, you, you so why am I living there as a kid growing up to go get losses? Yeah. yeah. Right. Now so we talked way. about. So you talked about you. You came up in Golden Ring. I was ineligible for every state tournament there was damn near in MJ and growing up because yeah. of all the rules. They wouldn't let me wrestle here. They wouldn't let me wrestle there. Oh, My daddy was really? like, "Shit, we wrestling everybody, every everywhere. We need losses." What kind of rules are these? <laughs> Like yeah, I don't the, know what the rules used to be. MSW. But because you wrestled up in, yeah. in well, was there? I, wrestled I mean, for you this were, club, I couldn't go wrestle out at this club. Uh, the McDonough duels, the I couldn't wrestle oh, in the okay, uh, Wildwood duels, or I'd wrestle for Nor'easter for the Virginia Beach duels. And, and so they were trying to claim everywhere. Were, so a Maryland kid, you were kid? Going they were trying to claim you yeah. were a Maryland kid. If you, I mean, you remember? If you remember, I won Fargo for Florida. Right, right. <laughs> that was that's a story of a whole right. So all right, well let's so. Yeah, St. Joe, right? St. Joe was a freshman. Then it was Lock Raven as a uh, you, you and Stone in the finals, from right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then North that. County as a junior. Yeah. Oh my God, you've been all over the place. And then well, Edo, my senior year, and then I came back, graduated from North County. Wow. Four high schools, four colleges. So, okay. and yeah, so senior nationals, you were... I didn't even wrestle my senior year before that. But yeah, Because Maryland so went... Charles with the fist fights. So, let's talk about that. <laughs> what? So, did your dad just try to get you out of Maryland? Is he just like, hey, well, I gotta... they they wouldn't let me go to school because of the pending. I was getting charged as an adult with first degree assault for defending myself with felony cases. So, this is and just name. to clarify that all those charges were dropped eventually. Everything was null process dismissed. Yeah, completely. No, 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 once, yeah, yeah, yeah once they, yeah. they, you know, they looked at everything, they they dropped it. But the initial thing in Maryland's a really messed up state in the sense that. The legal system is kind of flawed. Like, I mean, people can really just go to the courthouse or a commissioner. I don't know how it really works, but say whatever they want. And now these same reporters that have been writing stories about me being all-state football and playing lacrosse and transferring for wrestling are writing crazy stories about these accusations and just chart. Like, they didn't even give me no due process, no fair day. And there was no innocent until proven guilty. There was no – they never recanted on their stories to tell the truth about. Like, they never – so I mean, let's like let's for everybody listening. You want to um, so you want to lay it out for what happened exactly? There was a I mean, for people that don't know, yeah, it was a kid from. You were you a junior or I'm a sophomore? Senior. Well, wait, which one? No, so the navy, the yeah, navy so thing. The navy academy. Which me, one? <laughs> my me and my brother-in-law, my buddy Pat Carey. He's my brother now. He's married to my sister. He got his another mom's state champ. For, yeah, yeah, for North, North County. County. Yeah, yeah, so we're there and. Uh, Basically, these guys are in college. And they one's like a safety, and they're like a football uh, linebacker. And it's like two other guys, and I guess we're dancing with their girlfriends out. And we was, we used to go out to Bourbon Street Thursday night before that was team night in Bourbon down. It's closed down now. So when we were in North County, like an underage club or something. That's yeah, literally right. Adult club right, right down here. here. Yeah. It's closed down, but it was teen night and our. Buddy, it's where the old Hammerjacks was. Old oh, Hammerjacks, yeah. yeah. Daddy used to hate me being there. <laughs> <laughs> he used to say this is trouble. 
and then I used to have football games on Friday. We have to be in school one time on Friday. I to, I'd go show up in my club clothes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was ready to go. But, I mean, him and I just one time, we just had to kick these guys' asses. They were mad that we were having more fun than them, I guess. Come to find out, they were, like, starting football players for Naval Academy. They weren't even allowed to be out there either. But it, this was a fun time, Thursday nights. <laughs> so they came up from Annapolis, and their coaches eventually found out, and they got thrown out of the academy. Because no they, they're not allowed to be out of quarter zone until Friday, yeah. Yeah. I won't put their names on blast, but uh, they got what was coming to them. So, but they, so, but they like, press charges? No. Um, or just... I, I, I don't know if it was them or, the, yeah, I, some, somehow somebody pre- ended up pressing charges. Somehow the police ended up showing yeah, up some, and charges yeah, were pressing yeah. some prank. Right. And then they had video footage of me and Pat Carrier out there looking like freaking, looking like Power Rangers. We're just <laughs> playing, doing spin sidekicks and. <laughs> doing like jujitsu crap we're we're just having fun i think yeah now what what was with the lock rave or yeah lock raven to, no mount st uh, joe right well no but lock raven to north county was oh. the sophomore division between the two state yeah, yeah, championships yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. okay like there was, oh, was why that, did i transfer was that just oh. moving yeah that was just yeah my mother lived on the uh east you know east baltimore side of town towards like taos and lock raven perry hall vicinity and then my grandparents live over in glen burnie okay yeah. And so, yeah, I just moved, changed addresses, okay, went so to 4A high school, better school, bigger, better football, got kind of got recruited, you know what I mean? Like Obviously a good a good wrestling partner also. Oh, that's what I mean. It, had, it was a lot, it was like, you know, all my moves and decisions are like, it's like chess life, right? My next move's got to be my best move. Yeah. So usually before I make these moves, I create like a whole freaking Excel spreadsheet on value analysis. I give everything a point value. And then my... Wait, do you really? Yeah, my, my moves are all, like, logistic. Like, they make sense mathematically. It adds up to what's the correct move to make. Okay. Yeah. But you don't have a spreadsheet for social media. <laughs> Fuck no. I need one. <laughs> how, do I, uh, how do I analyze this tweet? <laughs> Is this the right tweet? Yeah. yeah I need one of those. Well, so where do you – where's your, your heart? Well, you know, you, everybody looks back at their alma mater – it, that with pride, right? Where they root for that team. You know, I still right. have love for Hammond High School, even though I'm not at all affiliated with the program. Mm-hmm. Like, where's your where's your heart lie? Um, looking back at high school, would it be North County? Yeah, I mean, I'm Lock Ravens first and only state champ ever. You know what I mean? Sure. I've got some good friends there. Uh, I got some. Uh, they almost had another one a couple of years ago. Did they? Yeah, Marquise Kemp almost did it. Stop. He went on uh, one and on. Wow. Um, yeah, he really, I mean, he went on a run, beat the number one ranked guy in the quarters, and he just, you know, and I think he just started. He made the finals? He did, yep. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, he's, he did. Good uh, for him. Yeah, he had a, a See, great so that's, run that's, that's good, man. Guy like that sees my name on the wall. He, I know he wants it, so has he got another year left? No, no, he, oh, he graduated. Man. But he, he really did. I mean, for somebody that started wrestling, I believe, in high school, he uh, that's awesome. he, he really went on uh, went on a run with he it. He's getting wrestling to the next level? Or is he gonna, uh, There's talk about it, yeah, so I don't want to misspeak. Uh, yeah. I know David Hollingsworth, uh, old man, or older David Hollingsworth, um, he works with him quite a bit, and they're looking to to wrestle at the at the next level. Also, cool man. So, yeah, that's what um, I love. Giant, you know, little gems like that that start late that are just athletes raw. Sure, those are like the diamonds in a rough. Oh, they're fun to root for. You they're know, they're fun to coach. They're fun to work with, man. Can I hook up to this charger real quick? Yeah. Sorry. It's all good. My food. Dude. He's got to get ready for the next the next tweet. Oh, yeah, I got to get that. Gotta yeah, get we got to be able to share all this cool stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so the um, you talked about like those are the type of guys you like to coach. What kind, what is your coaching experience? Honestly, I've never had a guy I could work with enough to consider my protege, just because I feel like it takes away mm-hmm. from my own training. Like, I've never wanted to give. Oh, you have your own goals that you're still. Yeah, I'm so I'm so a doer, sure. man. Yeah, but so but I love I love teaching. I love it as almost as much as I love competing. Really, so like. Uh, I mean, again, that's like something I just see. It's organic. It's natural. It's going to be my progression, just like fighting is. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just as natural as anything. Like, I believe that's how you give back. Share knowledge. I mean, what are you going to do with all this? I've I've forgotten more wrestling than most people ever know. Right. You know what I mean? How are you going to teach? You You know, Owings Mills High School always always has coaching (laughs) opportunities and openings. We'll just shamelessly plug that real quick. Oh, Tommy DeCaro would roll in his grave. (laughs) Yeah, it's um but do you do you try to just somewhere where you're close to? Like I, I know that you're 
you have an affiliation, or not an affiliation, but very close with the guys over at Blue Claw. Mm -hmm. um, like, you ever pop back in there? Yeah, like, oh, all the time. Yeah, man. Practices. And I'm always, T yeah, I'm always. Uh, like, well, you did, did you do a clinic for them? There was yeah. a clinic around uh -huh. last year or something. Yeah. yeah. Do you get a little wiggy and, and, yeah, pick some crabs, drink a beer with them. You know what I mean? That's my guy. I mean, man, I was there. I was his first guy. I was Wiggy's first guy when he started up over. Like, oh no, that yeah, you were. Yeah. You're the first yeah, one he worked with. Me, me, him, and Bowman. Yeah. Yeah, you were. Yeah, Bowman. You were the Bowman era for at Mount St. Joe and, and all that. Yeah, yeah, Carrie, Pat Carrie would come uh -huh. over with us when I went to North County. All three of us would be. I mean, some great. That was guys. when Bowman yeah, defected school. from Glen Elg over yeah. to St. Joe. Well, that's the first time I ever heard of him. As Bowman was talking about, you know, and Downey, and I. I won't repeat any of the stories because I and more than anything else because I don't I don't remember them in enough detail. It's it's you know several years ago now, but I just said I need to meet this kid. This guy sounds awesome. Yeah, um, <laughs> we've had some good times together, man. Yeah, it's um well. So now also I know something that that's been going on. And I don't know that many people know about it, but Fantastic Wrestling. Um, who same people that do BJJ Fanatics, which is an online oh, resource. Oh, wrestling fanatics, yeah, yeah fanatic for, wrestling, yeah, yeah. For for uh, what is it? Fanatic wrestling mm -hmm. is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Same but, company. Yeah. Um, and Bernard does that, right? Faria, does he put that one out? Well, it's actually uh, owned by uh, somebody else, but he 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 plays a big. Yeah, he, he they have a great setup, man. He's, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you've done a few uh, DVDs for them. Yeah, I got three three DVDs for him. Uh, got, a, got a couple more coming. Um, I love that with them. The instructionals, great, great to work with. Mm -hmm. Right up in Boston. Um, man, I'm drawing a blank on the uh, on the owner's name, but he's a, he's a really great guy. Uh, but Michael, 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 Michael Zenga's the okay. owner. Zenga. Gotcha. And yeah. uh, so guys like Donaher and Gordon Ryan, they're making most of their money off of that jujitsu. That's another way to grow wrestling, right? I mean, sure. you've got the average guy like coming off a nine to five work day. Buying these jujitsu videos, watching them while they're in the office. Absolutely. Can't wait to get off to go roll around and, and try it. Yeah. And tell their friends about how they can break their arm and tap them out. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is really cool. So imagine that with the same thing with wrestling. Now, wrestling is just really hard to get. That's where it's hard to appease to, to grow wrestling. Cause yeah. The, do you guys really want to get off, be done here, and then go wrestle? It's hard. Yeah. It's like not fun. Like it's I, Yeah, I, I mean jujitsu is I mean, I'm not shitting on it, but it's way more chill. Yeah, it's know? rolling. It's yeah, like, it's hey, just, you know. wrestling's like, hey, let me beat the shit out of you. No, and as somebody that's worked <laughs> at uh, at an MMA gym, it's like jujitsu class packed, kickboxing class, as long as there's not sparring, packed. Boxing, same thing. Packed. packed. Wrestling. Why? Two people. Why? Yeah, you know, because Why? it's hard. Because it's hard. Because everybody wants to. Somebody said it's it. It's so actually hard. But everybody has got to. I mean, like maybe not, but like you clearly can see that wrestlers do extremely well in MMA. Oh, like, and, and people don't talk down the importance. It, there's it's, just, it's, it's the most yeah. important. Well, because they're because uh, the people most people come to your gym aren't training to to do UFC. They most just right. the they want to be able to choke but out the, the, the guy. Yeah. It's way too hard for the average civilian to do. Why would right. they want to put themselves through? And one of the guys that, that I train, his name's. Iggy Munoz actually wrestled for, for Franklin, but he's the dumbest person that I know, said one of the smartest things where he says, everybody wants to be good at wrestling, but nobody wants to do the work it takes yeah. to be good at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, are you capable of, I didn't know that you could come up with a smart that, you know, yeah, or a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a, a statement that smart. Profound. I screw up the statement, sound like an idiot. So, <laughs> uh, But I'm saying you're right, man, because guys like Kobe are flying me in to wrestle them. Sure. Guys like Corey Anderson are coming into practice as two, three times a week. Guys like Nikki Ride and Gordon Ryan are coming to wrestle us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going in with them, too, to get their work in because i got to be comfortable in that world. But wrestling is like another animal. No, and we, we have a good – that's a good segue. So you've decided you're going to make the transition to – MMA. 100%, I'm yeah. sure this was not an overnight decision. I'm sure yeah. you had a spreadsheet. Yeah, but this, no. this, yeah, I almost transitioned back when I shit hit the fan in Nebraska, man. It's always, I've always been on the frets. So, okay. You know what I mean? What, what's the inspiration for that? You know, I love fighting. Okay. I'm like, shit, I've always oh, caught all these. I, yeah, I mean, I've always, I've, I got like 20000 in legal fees to prove it. Now I get, I got time to make get paid. <laughs> Jesus. Right. I'm like, hey, guys, if you got a problem with me, Let's sign a waiver. I'm just out in power plant trying to enjoy my night. You got to get a waiver, a mouthpiece. You got to meet me at it. I don't even fight. Right. Ever since I got in all that trouble. Yeah. No, and that's, that's do, something. I mean, do I people, I mean, you're a, you're a big guy. Like, do you think people try to 
I think it's like, a, yeah, you? because of like who I, like I'm, because I'm so nonchalant, I'm so relaxed, and like I'm so, like I'm beating people up all day in practice <laughs> that it's like I, when I'm finally out and relaxing, I really want to be out and relaxing. Well, and now you say, yeah, I'm. That's what. What did you used to say, Mac? And people try to pick your fight. Oh, like I'm a professional fighter. You got to pay me. Yeah, you got to pay me. Yeah, like pay me. But really, what it is now, like. And I was guilty of this at a point in time in my life, and I don't know whether you were or not, but, you know, it, did you ever, I don't want to say went out looking for a fight, but did you ever, you know, were you eager to to scrap when you were younger at some certain times? Man, and that's the thing. Like, when trouble comes my way, it's like I truly feel like I'm the one solving a problem. Like, I'm never going out starting them, no. looking for them. I had rules. I wasn't allowed to fight anybody younger than me, anybody smaller than me. If I saw somebody getting picked on, I could intervene. Um, if they swung first on me, I was allowed to defend myself. But I've always lived by a certain thing of rules. Like, I'll never fight over words. Like, you'll never be able to say any word to him. Right. Where did those rules you. come from? Your, your, your dad? My or granddad, just, yeah, yeah. My family, yeah. But, I mean, just like respect, like a mutual respect for people rules. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to be able to say word. Now, if you get too close to me and start spitting on me, like something really disrespectful. Especially now with covid man oh, yeah 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 that's what i mean like shit like if you're if you're in my bubble like you know what i mean i can feel your breath or like there's certain things that are like you get uncomfortable with but in general i'm such a like i got my grandfather's temperament man now right. my dad if you know him he's higher strong sure you know quicker to go but i'm so relaxed and it's like man i don't want to go pick fights with civilians are you going to pass those rules down um like you know when you start having yeah i and... think they're good to live i think i mean i think I ain't never give it to anybody who didn't have it coming, man. I swear. I, I, I think I I'm going to tell my kid, and I've said this for a while. Jason can, can attest to it. But, you know, the never throw the first punch thing. Right. I'm going to tell my kid, if you know there's going to be a fight, throw the first punch. Well, that's <laughs> my granddad's rule, too. He yeah. says even if you think they're about to hit you, hit them. Right. <laughs> you know, so just, there's different. You got two different theories. But my dad knows because of, of my training. Mm -hmm. And I can't. You know I mean? I, I, I avoid more fights than I get in. Yeah, just for being from this area, that. people know who you are. They want to use your name as a way to make a name for themselves. They're like, oh, if everybody sees me knock out Pat Downey at this bar. Maybe I'll, you know, what I mean, I, I don't know, but that's got to be how they're thinking because I'm minding my own business and they're trying to get their asses kicked for no reason. Yeah, is, is that how? And that's, just that's how, how it happens. I'm shooting <laughs> pool. Guys want to get their ass beat, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'm going to catch a charge, but I guess I got to you know, do it. And there's nothing you're – like, at some point, you you are the consistent variable here, though, right? Yeah. If you're the one – Common so, denominator. You're like, it, it's – so you, there's nothing that you can look back and reflect on and say, man, I could have handled that or done something a little different to a Maybe point. I just really like fighting. <laughs> Maybe I could handle them differently, and I just don't. Well, what's – so what's the game plan going into to MMA? Are you going to go straight into – professional ranks you're gonna fight yeah. amateur yeah i'm going to some prize fights which god i've been training my whole life for this man i'm ready okay what's the fights. training and now just to, to clarify you know you still have wrestling goals that that you're gonna be yeah, working towards yeah. at the same time yeah, so I'm qualify for the olympic trials and in then, april and then is it and, we, got the, and, we got the nationals coming up in october 8th through the 10th and then what well, and then after this cycle do you plan on switching and transitioning fully to mma or are you going to still still no i'll wrestle I'll, 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 I'll go full-time probably after 2024 olympics okay you know what i mean like, yeah you yeah, try to do both yeah okay but yeah but like still i'm just i just don't want to sign any big contract i just don't want to sign any long-term deals yet no bellator no ufc off the gate just keep developing i mean skills. if keep i mean if they if skills. something comes calling though oh, you course. know you gotta well, like, you gotta seize on that opportunity yeah, yeah. Right? oh I'm a, yeah, I'm a prize fighter man i'm trying to get paid I'll well, fight. Yeah. I'll, you know i mean i'm fighting for money i wrestle because it's fun and i love it fighting yeah. i'm out here trying to get rich you would know? you say ufc is the ultimate goal is that where you you want to fight in the ufc or would you be satisfied taking the every, right every time bellator's best fighters to get offered by ufc bella scott Coger goes and pays them more yeah I'm going where the money is. I okay. Don't care. You know what I mean? Literally. Sure. PFL, Lance Palmer makes a million in a prize uh, tournament. Right. No, there's and there is money out there. I pick these guys' brains. Cody Garbrandt trains with us. Frankie Eggers right near us. Corey Anderson's one of my good friends. You know, right. Lance Palmer, I know in person. Like, I mean, these guys are vets in the game. They're established. And Absolutely. I'm, and they're giving me their advice, and I'm taking heed. Yeah. Is now? Do you um, do you think at some point? Because you look at a lot of these guys that are coming up. You know, like Pico is probably not the the best example because of unfortunately the way that, him that the guards. I'm saying. But yeah, Bellator did Logan Storley. He's um, doing great. You know, um, Cole Conrad when when he was active. Uh, AJ Logan. McKee. A lot of these guys. They're they're signing them 
almost immediately and start Bellator. writing Bellator. Yeah. Do you think Bellator has a, an opportunity to take over as the, the upper echelon organization from the UFC, or do you think that's going to be a tough task? Yeah. I don't ever see him supersede. I think you'd have to. I think, I don't know. Man. No. Right? No. Disney, ESPN, nah. Not the, not with the connections that Dana White is having and the fighters that he has. Sure. Yeah. And and the best guys the still super seen. fights that he can even put on. That's God, that's the ultimate goal. What a co promotion or something like that? Yeah, super fight. Begin on pay per view. Like, yeah. Uh, and and look at the look at the guy that got assigned to his schematic. He was in the UFC for two years. Mm -hmm. And his first, you know, that's extremely actually, active. That's what you want to add before him. Well, extremely even during. Yes. Yeah. But beforehand, to earn that. Mm -hmm. He was, you know what I mean, extremely, John, same way, extremely active. So that's the schematic. But you want, I want a prize fight. And then come into the UFC, not like a Askren, it takes so long. Or even DC took a little too long, you know. I don't want to take that long. Because then, what were you saying earlier with a guy like Tom? Like, your best years are behind you, you know? Right. You know, I don't, I, I fear that. I don't want that to where it takes too long. Oh, you want to strike when the iron's hot. Exactly. And okay. that, and that is a... Uh, that's also not going into the UFC at 10 and 10. Right. That's not it either. That's not the right move either. So, you know, I got management, man. Brian, you know, I wish we had some, I wish he was here because it, these are better questions for him. No, and we can talk him. about that. You just recently signed with Sucker Punch. That's what I mean. Right? So, Hamper's my guy, you know, and it's also Brian Butler, but I trust my team, you know. Like, I, I know, I've known this guy since I was a little boy at Colats, and Colat Carey brought him on board. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so Brian and I go back. Yeah, I mean he's got you no, know what they've what got is. forty plus UFC guys. Right? Yeah, yeah. And like yeah. all of my professional fighters are are fight. You know they're they're represented by Sucker Punch as right. well. Um, so I mean it's definitely a, a got a, rep Baltimore, a place that Maryland. you can trust. It was um, I mean you could say I was I might have been Brian's first client in a weird way. He convinced me to fly up to Chicago without training and go pick a fight out there one time for whatever it's stupid just don't do it the way that i did there you go it's probably that's how not to do it though there's yeah. still a lot of information learned yeah <laughs> you know like so now, now do you um what's your training regiment going to be when you do are you working any striking or the submission game right now yeah, or yeah, do you have yeah. time to do that yeah. while training i'm literally always working man i'm, I'm Don of hers. I'm a big meeting. I got to do YouTube podcast with Nikki Rod, and we got a big training day set up Thursday tomorrow. And got to get back on the turnpike to Jersey. So, got a couple one one last move. Get all my stuff back home, and then I'm gonna take it all down to American Top Team. Okay. Trust Mako. Going down to, to Coconut Creek. Trust Conan. Trust, a, trust the team down there. Have you been down there yet? Like in mm -hmm. in Coconut Creek before? Oh, yeah. It's an amazing facility. It's, oh yeah. It's awesome. I was there for 10 days getting Covington ready for, for Marty. I guess oh. I didn't do a good enough job. <laughs> hey, yeah, but hell of a fight, though. It was a great fight, it? right? It was great. Their the wrestling kind of just nullified each other, which makes a good fight, so they're striking. They weren't it. scared to scrap, though. They were I loved throwing. It. I loved it. It was, uh, I mean, that, that was a great one. What do, Now, are you, do you see yourself kind of taking the personality that, that or the perception of you in the wrestling community and, and you know, turn the volume up on it once it's time to, to work over to, to like the MMA route? Yeah, I mean, I'm already a free agent now and I already have just become, you know, a little more relaxed with like the media and showing a different side of myself, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I'm from freaking East Baltimore, man. Y'all are gonna take me as I am or, or not. Like, I don't care if I sure. lose a bunch of fans or gain a bunch, I'm literally not out here doing it to create a persona or I'm just trying to be me. But we're in an era where the the guys that are super, you know, making those those jumps in, especially financially in the big fights are, are ones that aren't afraid to speak their mind. And the ones that are best at it are the ones where it comes off organically, where it actually seems like they're not faking. You know, Conor McGregor is obviously the best example of it before him, Chael Sonnen. Um, mm -hmm. Like, do you do you mm -hmm. think that you already have a leg up going in? You're comfortable talking to people. Already. Yeah, I think that's going. That's why I kind of said it, hinted at this earlier. I think that I'm going to be accepted and loved a lot more in this other world. I mean, just this ability to be myself and mm -hmm. be accepted for myself is like, you know, pretty cool. Like wrestling, it's not like that at all. Right. They just can't wait to crucify me and cancel me and freaking, eh, eh, Pat Downey, you're not my world team member. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Yeah, I am. Another year now. 
Yeah, and you think you, <laughs> but you, you think you'll be loved more in the in the MMA. Hundred yeah. percent. Okay. Yeah. Now, what what part? And you said you've been training a little bit. What part um, of the game, other than wrestling, do you feel like you've taken a liking to, or that you've excelled at quicker? Like, would you say the striking aspect or the All submission? I mean, I've, I, my dad, man, like I was in jujitsu before wrestling. I was in judo before wrestling. I was in freaking Baltimore Boxing Club and up there. I mean, and you know, what I mean, Gravante Davis is from. Yeah, you know I mean, we have mm -hmm. a great. We have great. Uh, combat scene so this shit comes natural man it's like oh, I just freaking love it yeah. I love it all I love it all now what I need to get better at is my flexibility so I can throw these kicks the way I like with, sure. with the speed and the snap and the pop um, checking you know just transitioning just feeling comfortable I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm still standing up a little too upright um, but there's some these are like these are fixes that I'm watching on tape and there's subtleties, man. Just, well, it's like anything else. So over time, that flexibility will. Like I don't think I could kick somebody in the knee when I first started. Like you know, right. let alone I the head the or, right, yeah. or the body. But it just with enough repetition. Right. And anytime that you're doing an unfamiliar movement, which like let's be real, even if you get in, you know, a thousand street fights, how often do you throw a high kick? Like you know, right. it does, it's more than, uh, somebody who's trained to throw high kicks right. in the street fight because you're not doing anything live. Yeah. yeah. It's, like it's, adrenaline's it's, hitting you, you're live. You're not doing. Huh, let, you're me, let me do this new new that. move I just learned. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, but you're all like, that stuff with live. repetition will well, and with your athleticism, I'm sure that it's now maybe you're not high kicking everybody. Like that's what I mean. I need the shit to come to me where I'm not thinking about it. Like the yeah. way I wrestle, I don't think out there. Sure. Oh, whatever. I was like, wow, wow, wow. You know what I mean? Wow. Like I, I just feel. Yeah. That's why I want to be so comfortable where I'm still thinking, and then that leads to me reacting. And it all creates tenseness. I'm still getting too tired too quickly because I'm not as real. I, mean, I can go wrestle for an hour. Mm -hmm. I fight for like ten minutes. I'm like dead. Yeah. If and now the the two things that that I see with uh, um, people when they're doing unfamiliar physical activity, they, the two main things right. are, are tensing your muscle and holding your. Because these fighters that can fight for an hour come in and wrestle me for ten minutes. They're sure. dead. So yeah. And it's like, no, I mean, like we're obviously in different shapes here. We're doing something. Different. Well, yeah, and you might be. I mean, maybe next time. You I think it's what you're saying. That yeah. comfortable level, make, make the, sure the muscle breathe, tensity. Make sure I'm staying. Well, I have to do it in jujitsu when I'm with these best guys, like yeah. that are bigger than me. And was that your first jujitsu match match against Ever. Gordon Ryan? Yeah, that's what I mean. So that's I'm a, just trying to stay on my feet and live. Yeah. Like, once, for, once they put us down, I was in another world. Well, no, just to kind of clarify for everybody, because there's a lot of the Maryland wrestling community might be unfamiliar. Gordon Ryan is. The the current open weight Abu Dhabi submission wrestling. So yeah, Yogi submission yeah. wrestling. That's kind of the he's the pound world for pound world champion. He's pound for pound number one in the world. Oh, so, like yeah. I don't do jujitsu often, but when I do, that's a hell of a the guy's the best. In the, yeah, I mean, I'm a freaking white belt. Yeah. Do you get nervous still for competition or anything? Yeah. Okay. I get nervous before I get nervous before a freaking. I try to you know anything. I try to make it nerve wracking. We got I got. I just had a. Bet with my buddy I could swim underwater in my pool five times and it was like hundred and fifty dollars and I was like nervous as shit if I could do it or not. <laughs> right. But I'm that's my game, man. I I need to test myself. Yeah, so at this it point me alive. all you've wrestled everywhere and you've wrestled at every level. What are you thinking, you know, right before you step on the mat? Like what is there anything going through your head? Yeah, I gotta really um relax myself to create like a uh, kind of a docile serene version of myself because i can get really uh clammy with the anger i can get really tight and i can get my own in my own head and expend useless energy really it's like you know you think of all that shit to get yourself fired up mm -hmm. and any emotion really is bad i think in the sport i, I want to be like and my you know empty thoughts empty empty head clear head cool calm and just like relax man like a freaking like a loosey-goosey like a I don't know. Do you think you'll approach fighting the same way, or do you? Think yeah, you'll... I hope I'm able to because okay. I just, you know, in 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 my survival life, I I realize that's the best way to handle shit. Is like, you know, bad things come out when you're angry. Bad things come out when you're too happy and relax. You know what I mean? Right. You can get caught either way. I'm too mad. You catch me coming in. I'm too happy and chilling. You just clip me while I'm relaxed. So I want to be like where I'm just. Focused. Focus, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, focus, yeah. And what's the timeline for us? When do when can we expect to see P D three at the uh you know, in the cage or ring, I guess. But Yeah, it's a good question, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna just trust my team, my management, go down there where these guys assess me, you know, spar, fight, train, whatever they you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whatever they whatever the fast track is. 
to be a pro. Okay. I'm on it. I'm on it. Like I'm, you know, what I mean, I'm trying to get it going. And have you met with with Dan Lambert or or Mike Brown or any of the guy like the coaching stuff or yeah, or down at ATT? I was. Uh, yeah, man. Dan invited. He brought me to the fights. We were at Masvidal and uh, oh, nice. Diaz gotcha. yeah, right there in the garden. You know, what I mean, I hop from train right on the train and take that. That's how I train up at Donahers. That's how I okay get in New York a lot. So I, I got like I said, I was down there for ten days. Um, when was that fight with Colby and uh? Marty, man. Oh, it's last year. Um, was it September of last year? October. Not that yeah. long. Yeah, damn, time is fine. Yeah. Well, COVID kind of put a stop to everything. Yeah, time didn't stop, but but activity certainly did. Yeah, so it seems like it was soon to me because that was like the late, one of the last big fights. Sure, until this big wave just, until, yeah. just came. Yeah. So, I mean, I was down there, man, and I was thinking about making that move. In hindsight, maybe I should have just have already been there. Yeah, I could have predicted all this fucking COVID, and I mean, I'm I was focused on training for the Olympic trials, and you know, yeah. I had no way of knowing this. Sure, or else I'd already been down there. Yeah, and that, it, like it, it is going to be difficult to train for both the Olympics and fighting. No, or do you think you think? No, nah, I think I, I think I, like I said earlier, I've forgotten more wrestling than I than I'll ever learn. Um, with that being said, I can wrestle. You know what I mean? Yeah, I need to acquire these other skills for from a changing my body everything that i'm doing with this is gonna like the lean leaning out process the uh the mu muscle cardio throwing the the hands and the jujitsu rolling and these other skills that i'm acquiring that is so like hard mm -hmm. tiring on your body that it's gonna make it's gonna complement my wrestling and all the cross training like the yoga and the, the beach and the, i mean i just got a really good plan and i think me changing my body into a fighter is going to make me a way better wrestler. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's there's something to be said for that. I could see it. Now, I like this is going to seem like a very boring question for everybody. Are you, do you do you fight with the same stance? And obviously not with the level, but I'm talking about the the foot forward. Do you fight in orthodox stance or like with your your lead leg? Yeah, I'm um, the same way with fighting that I'm wrestling. I don't have one. Like you know what I mean? You're switching. Yeah, switching I don't stances. believe in having a set. Lead leg when I wrestle, or okay, fight. So, yeah, I'm, I'm. I can. I, I the same way. I ride a surfboard or a snowboard or mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like uh, lateral sports. Like I do both sides. Like so. Yeah. No, I don't believe in that, man. I just. I love it all. You know what I mean. I sure. definitely am not having like a predetermined. Like you're not gonna be able to call me a southpaw. Okay. Or you're not gonna be able to call me. You know what I mean. It you're does, gonna be. You're gonna be transitioning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same way I wrestle. Like I. Like when I stalk my opponent, my left hand follows my left leg. My right hand's here, my lead leg hand's inside this. So when I stalk him, I'm walking forward, so this has to happen. Mm -hmm. My lead leg changes, and my hands are gonna change. It's gonna be the same way when I'm fighting for my kick, but I really like the south pole for the left leg kick to the liver. It's a great shot. Yeah, it's, uh, it's well, I wouldn't say it's one of my money makers, but <laughs> <laughs> you know about oh, that one. Some of the well, I'm a southpaw, so. Yeah, okay, um, so that's your shot. Yeah, I wasn't good. I was a left leg lead wrestling, but I wasn't good enough at wrestling to have to make that much of a transition when I when I switched to fight southpaw. But um, but yeah, that's, I didn't switch stances up. I was, I'm not nearly athletic enough or coordinated to, to be able to handle that sort of thing. <laughs> um, but you were, you were southpaw when you fought, though, and so you threw that, you threw that liver Sure, kick. yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't okay. want to be close to something I could punch me. My head right. Head was headbutting it. So, so was I'm training with Colby, right and we got the bigger gloves, we got the headgear on, and I'm doing well. I'm taking, I'm stalking him, I'm coming forward, I think I'm in the game. And he goes, wow! And I was like, whoa! I didn't <laughs> even see this shot, because I was so, like, I focused, his hands are up, and I had this whole thing afterwards. I spent a lot of time doing this, yeah. just learning to react to that, to check in this, man, because that is a deadly shot. No, I tell people that, like, I in fights, you know, in the, the heat of the moment, I never remember getting hit. In, I did get hit in the head. You don't like, remember it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think about it. It doesn't register with me. I don't, pain doesn't register with me, but to the body. Oh, okay. My We're God, great. Yeah. You I feel, feel that, that every fight. single you time. You feel a body shot in a fight. Every You're, time. You can't breathe. You're like, <laughs> yeah, it's like it was a shock sure no and i've, I've definitely looked in, and felt like that before mm -hmm. no question about it yeah. the um well i mean we can um start to wind this bad boy down but before we asked people uh and it gave them an hour's notice and there was a lot of questions that, that people posted in our mailbag section oh, cool. to reach out to you with so you know go figure you're a popular guy um 
Third, first one's Ronnie Rossi, PD3. Give a shout out to Hurricane Junior and Blue Claw. Nah, Ronnie Ross, what's up, man? Hurricane, rest in peace, Hurricane. The um, it uh, Jamie P- or Pizzini. God, I should know his last name and how to say it. I go to the Dundalk tournament every you know every year. But in transition to MMA. Uh, are you going to, for example, be like Askren, beat everybody with great wrestling and by being tough? Are you working on BJJ submission grappling? Uh, he said, forgive my ignorance if he's already training BJJ. I can't imagine where he'd find time to do both of the wrestling schedule. No, it's a great question. And uh, that's kind of speak on what, we what I was talking about all, uh, earlier is wrestling is always going to be my base, right? Like I believe in it because I'm going to wrestle through the 2024 Olympics. So with that being said, before a wrestling match or a fight, wrestling for a trial, I might go to RTC somewhere and get some personal training in with a wrestling camp. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'm just focused on being a fully developed fighter. That's why I'm going to American Top Team, develop my skills, you know? Absolutely. I want to be able to fight. I want Muay Thai. I'm talking to Dave LeDuc right now about striking. You know what left way is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Muay Thai with headbutts. But yeah, uh, no rounds. You know, or, or there are rounds, but no. world champ of it? No Dave LeDuc? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. That's who uh, I'm going to be training with here shortly, too, out in Cyprus and Greece. Okay, and that's Burmese, right? That's yes. a Burmese art? That's a Burmese fighting art. But gotcha. uh, I, I believe it to be more deadly than the, than the Muay Thai. Could, I mean, there's no end to it till somebody says, I've had enough. I think so the rule one. set is the best. So that's one thing that, like, I'm also, like, I'm not just. And there's bare knuckle, too, isn't yes, it? Yes, I'm not no, just. And there's headbutts, the ninth line. Yep. So, true street fight. Sure. I like that. Okay, and you're going to give that a shot? You yeah. think you'll compete in that yeah, at some point? Yeah, I would like to try that. Like, stuff like that is like, I'm not, that's why I'm so adamant about not signing a contract to anywhere. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, for, without question. Now, some of these, it, it might get a little repetitive. I didn't preview or mm-hmm. or go through any of these. Dusty Jones, does he support women's wrestling? <laughs> we touched on that one a lot. Yes. Um, you know, it's yeah. a, there, there's at least one of those last nice questions on, on the comments. Um, <laughs> Will Moore, in uh, in quotations, says, "What do you have to say to all the haters out there talking smack on the Lizard King?" Go fuck themselves. <laughs> Kevin Estrada wants to know, "What's your goal for your MMA career?" Be, become world champ. Be the world champion. Right? Whether welterweight, middleweight, like I don't care. I want to be a world champ. I want a belt. I'm, it, yeah, look what Cejudo did. He won the Olympics. He won. You know what I mean? He won sure. One UFC. Now, what's more important to you? Would you say your motivation is the pride of becoming a champion or the the paycheck? Do you do you care more yeah. about the the? Paycheck it's intrinsic. It's about? always intrinsic. I think the paycheck comes naturally when you have the intrinsic goal in mind. Just like I've done with wrestling. Uh huh. You know, I mean, I just now really started making real money right. as an athlete in wrestling. You know, what I mean, it's never been about the money. Sure. The love of the game, man. Whatever I do, I want to be the best at it. So the pride's the pride is going to get you there, and then the paycheck. You'll just trust the paycheck. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Trust that. That's the management, man. Sucker punch. They're going to get me paid. I'm just going to win. Can't go wrong with that. Christopher Pickett. I'd like to know more about what training he's previously done in boxing, sambo, etc. Also, along those same lines, does he really love wrestling, or does he love getting good at other? Does he really also <laughs> also along those same lines, does he really love wrestling or does he love getting good at anything martial arts related? Askren openly admitted not to love striking and other aspects of MMA uh, and what and see what how that limited his career. Jeez, I gotta get better with my reading. No, that's a, that's a good question because I, I'm not like that at all where I'm not trapped in this wrestler box. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, a guy like Pico, you could say he should have just been wrestling the whole time, might not have got knocked out, but he's a golden gloves boxer. Why mm-hmm. would he not use all of his skills? That's ridiculous, sure. right? Now, you see his last fight, you see him, you know, hit a nice outside step to the high crotch finish, boom, dunked him on his head, beat him up a little bit, boom, secured the choke. Easy money. Why not take the easy money win? I'm going to use all my skills, whatever presents itself. Guy's gonna give me a jab, I'm gonna take the jab. He can't stop me from putting him on his neck, I'm gonna put him on his neck. You know what I mean? Like I don't I don't view myself as a wrestler. I'm a fighter. Sure. Okay. OM Scorp still hiding under that name. Does Downey believe he has the full support of USA Wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, USA Wrestling's still behind me. Yeah. And the follow up on it, what qualification changes, if any, 
would he impose to ensure that the seating for the Olympic team is equitable? I don't even understand. I don't know. I don't so the, I, don't I guess the question it. is like, so you said you, you, you qualify, <laughs> but since you're a oh, world team, you, you skip, process? you skip. Um, I'm already qualified. Right. They so, didn't qualify because he qualified the weight for the Olympics. Right. The guys that are also are qualified are like, well, I don't know if it's a he because he hit, he got popped for bad substance, but Miles and uh, Deeringer, I know are in there. Maybe Sammy Brooks might be in there or Brett Farr. I think that's it though, right? Like there are only a few guys qualified. Now, mm-hmm. I don't even know the qualification procedures for this Olympic trials. Yeah, it's kind of weird because it was with that there, said, and then they those skipped guys, it. Yeah, with I those mean, guys being in there, like us five or six, that, I don't know. Leading forward, bracket sizes, seeds. I don't you're know. just showing up wrestle. I don't care. Yeah, I don't have time to worry about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. I never yeah. – it's not my ML. Yeah. It's not even – I have no control over it. So what the hell was it? Why am I worried? I just going to show up to all the tournaments and win. Right. That's what I worry I'm just making sure I'm ready to win. Sure. And gotta just, train, man. You know, yeah. let them know when your match is and go out there. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Compete. I mean, the U.S. Open, they made an announcement that we're having some nationals in in October. So that's sweet. Get yeah. some, we got some matches coming up with Fight TV being released soon. So that's gonna be sweet. What? So are fans gonna be at trials? Are they gonna? Is it gonna be empty arena? No idea. I'm just the wrestler. If it is empty, I have no is idea. That, is that gonna be weird for you though? That if it is empty arena, nah, or I'll is wrestle. it? No. Nah, no, mm-hmm. it'll be all we the same. We wrestle in practice just ourselves. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I'll hit up a guy and tell him to come wrestle me to be just him, me and him, you know? Right. Me and Carrie go wrestle in the pool. We're out in the field or mom and pops. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it don't matter. Yeah. I'm going to try to win regardless. No, it's – it now, like, do you – um do you think you'll be fighting bef- – well, you know, it would take long enough for this empty arena thing to, to pass by. And when you make your first fight, it'll be in front of fans? Maybe. I, maybe I don't fight till after the Olympic trials or the Olympics in uh-huh. August. You know what I mean? Like, maybe. And then hopefully, God willing, it's all behind us. That would be great. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Because she's if, – if you're going to fight – and not be at a big promotion right away. You're going to make most of your money off of the ticket sales. So that would be... Right, yeah. Or, you know, unless it's a pay-per-view, unless they come up with a new business schematic for it, but... No, and, and what what you're talking about is on the, the regional scene, a lot of times that the way the pay scale works is you get you do mm-hmm. get a fight purse where you, to, to fight and then an additional to win, but at the regional, it's not done like the UFC or, or Bellator. They actually ask you to, to sell tickets, right. and, and you get a cut of the, the percentage, right. um, whether it be 10%, 15 20 or however much of the ticket sales, mm-hmm. that, and that adds to your purse along with the sponsorships. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, I, obviously we'd really want it to... Uh, <laughs> be able to make you market, know, make yeah, market. maximize your you yeah, know yeah. your ability to monetize for sure. Right. Um, I did want to say thanks to everybody for writing into the mailbag. We're going to try to do this every week. I'll do a little better. Full disclosure: legitimately have dyslexia. I don't read very well, um, as everybody can see. Um, so I appreciate everybody being patient patient with it. Um, a couple of things just before we close up here, and then obviously if Jason has anything, you obviously a big fan of, of mixed martial arts and, and the UFC and Bellator. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody that stands out that that guy has phenomenal wrestling when you watch them fight? Yeah, there are. There are a couple guys. Um, I mean, Marty's one of you I train with that just, he might even have a takedown record, I think, or something. But, you know, or I'm taking... Miles it all down. I think Khabib, though, obviously. Sure. He's not even one of Russia's best wrestlers. And just from the Sambo background and growing up in Dagestan and that mm-hmm. Ossetia region, that yeah, whole area of Russia, he's got a huge advantage. When he, when he takes guys down, it's really hard for them to get out. Um, okay. But then you got a guy like John Jones, who I never thought was a really good wrestler. No, he's a national champ. Sure. But like, I wouldn't really consider him like that good of a wrestler, but he's so athletic and his style that for fight wrestling, I believe, you know, is different, right? MMA wrestling, I Absolutely. believe, is a little different than sure. There's would, modifications. Would he be a freestyle make. wrestling contender? Not in my opinion. No, but great, great. You know, like Daniel Cormier was on Olympian. Yeah, Olympian twice. Oklahoma think, State right? NCAA finals gave Kale one of his better college matches. I mean, sure. he's a really tough 2001, guy. Two thousand one, yeah. You know what I'm saying? John Jones took him down. I don't remember Daniel taking him down. 
Right. Okay. Just, just, just as a um, point of reference. Point. Sure. But what would Daniel do to him on a freestyle wrestling mat? Of He's course. a freaking two-time uh, Olympian. You know what I mean? So that's that's the kind of the analogy that really opened my eyes. I was like, wow, this JUCO cat can really run. And that was John. Okay. And you you think that you have the style of wrestling that's going to be you can modify. To that's be what I'm saying. My style that. is like get as soon as I get you in the cage or get my hands locked around you, it's mm -hmm. all feet to back. I'm not putting my head below my hips to set me up for a knee or an uppercut. I'm nothing like Askren. Right. Like where I would shoot on you to take you down. I'm closing distance inside, body lock, bang. You okay. know what I mean? Feet to back. I'm already side mount, side control, full mount, staying on my feet. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Ca catching you coming up. Like I my style, the way I'm gonna use the wrestling is what's gonna really set up all the other cool shit. Do you think there's anybody at the at the upper level of mixed martial arts that could hang with you in wrestling or that has wrestling comparable to you? No. Nowhere near. No. no okay. No level. Just, what what weight would you fight at? Eighty? Would you be eighty five? From one seventy to one two hundred five. Okay, I, I would love that. Gotcha. Th that vicinity, you know, my yeah. body type, like just just play with my body. No, welter middle, light heavy. Yeah, somewhere yeah, yeah, there. exactly. Maybe start light and go up. Yeah, go, as my skills develop, you know. Sure, but as you watch, you don't see anybody like man, like that guy. You know, your wrestling is going to, in your opinion, is going to be able to walk through. You know anybody that you see at the high level right now? Yeah. Okay. I think I have a huge. Yeah. Right now, I would. Give guys a problem. All I gotta do is take them down, hold them down. Right. Now, Charles Sonnen actually brought up a really good point not long ago. It might have been over a year now. It's not long, it's all relative. But um, he made a statement one time about the folk style wrestling and how important that is because of the control aspect. Like, do you think folk style wrestling as opposed to freestyle is going to help with your transition more? Yeah. Um, Some people argue the Greco because of the upper body and the sure. clinch and the hand fighting, which I feel like they have similar styles and skills in freestyle. But really, my way that I use all the leg hooks in freestyle with the throws and the leg trips, mm -hmm. that's like why they're like leg fouls. That's why I don't wrestle Greco because I am upper body focused. But right. the folk style aspect of it, I definitely agree with Chael. Um, I mean, you're holding them down. You're controlling them. That's Absolutely. right. I mean, and that's a, I've been Americanized too. So I, people forget that I grew up, you know, I'm from USA. I wrestle folk style. Right. You know, I'm a college all American. I know how to wrestle some folk style. So, I'm, yeah. Has it been a while since you've done much mat wrestling? I've, I've seen nah, I train the, train the college guys at Rutgers and Princeton. Gotcha. I try to go through a whole college room, you know. I love any wrestling, wrestling, man. Sure. Greco, folk style. No, I mean freestyle. And from a control standpoint on the ground, that, that folk style is going to help with with your training. I 100% really well. agree. I totally agree. No, that's awesome. No, I, I definitely wish you the best of luck. I'm sure there's going to be great things and absolutely have the personality that is going to uh, sell some tickets, no, you know, so. whether they're rooting for you or against you, something, you know, <laughs> it's, at, at least they're going to care about you fighting. So oh, man. That's, uh, um, that's a great thing. Jason, do you have anything else? Now you covered it. I uh, appreciate you uh, taking the time to come on, and I think, uh, especially you know Maryland, we got to support those those Maryland boys. No, yeah, it's baby. no, we definitely really. I mean, we know how busy you are. Really appreciate you taking the time, and on on a day's notice or yeah, something. Yeah, man. I I like, if I'm in town, you guys got a good cause. I felt it all love, man. I was happy to be here, and thanks for having me on. No, I I really appreciate. It. Before we let you go, we have a platform here. Anything that you want to say? Anything that, that you know you want to let the people know or anything before we get going? No, nah, just uh, just stay tuned and uh, look out for uh, my new company, Grow Wrestling. Cool. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. And, and thank you all, as always, for checking in with us. This is another episode of the CTW Podcast. We'll see you next time.